lot of people to be on a PR. Arjun's going. Think it's going? Yeah. Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to Tazwell Talks number three. This will be part two of decision making. So last week we talked about neutral game, as in what you have to do to get the first hit. But now we're going to talk about what you do after you get that first hit, okay? And this will be known as combo game. So things to know, just to recap, I'll be throwing out some terms. Shuffle, short hop, fast fall, L cancel, okay? So you jump at half height, you fall at the end, or you fall as soon as you reach the apex of your jump, throw out an aerial at that time too, and once you hit the ground, you press L as soon as you hit the ground with the aerial to cancel the lag in half. Okay, any questions about that? Alright, DI, directional influence. So this is where if someone hits you and you hold the control stick in a direction, then you kind of apply a force into the direction too and that'll affect your trajectory. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, I'll be throwing a lot of attack terminology. Hopefully everyone remembers like smashes, aerials, grabs. If I have any, if I say anything that anyone is unclear about, just stop and I'll explain. Um, knockback and hits done. So knockback is how far you're sent if you're hit, and hits done is the time frame where you can't actually input any attacks or commands. Um, and then a hitbox is part of your character that can attack something else that has like a physical presence that can hit something, and a hurtbox is part of your character that can be hit. Any questions about that? Okay, just a quick review. Alright, so a quote from my dearly beloved brother. So this was like beginning of last summer, he comes back after like a full year of, school, of college and he's like, I figured out Bailey. It's really simple. You just you just win neutral game, and then you land confirms. And that's it. And then you win. Simple. Right? Makes sense. What? No. <laughs> yes. That is, that's actually a pretty accurate way of describing Bailey. It's just you win neutral game, and as soon as you land a hit, you just keep hitting them. Okay? So what is a confirm? When I say confirm, that's kind of like what makes up a combo. Okay, a confirm is an attack, or it's it's a setup where you can get a likely or guaranteed attack. Okay, so like if you're in a situation and you can ha if, and it's possible to hit them and it's likely to hit them or you can guarantee to hit them and you hit them, that's called a confirm. Okay, so confirms don't happen in neutral, right? Because there's not a 100% chance of hitting them in neutral. Uh, confirms happen after you win neutral and land the first hit. Does that make sense? So ideally, you win neutral. Um, ideally, you win neutral. And that confirm sets them up for another confirm based on their, their trajectory and speed and character and everything. And then that hit leads into another one. And another one, another one, another one, until eventually you set yourself up for a really strong, a really strong attack, and you kill them. And that's it, right? That should be it. That should be melee. Just win neutral game, get one hit, keep hitting them off of that one hit based on the hit stun, and then kill them. That's a lot easier said than done, though, right? That's called a zero to death. What I just said, like if you, they're at zero percent, you get the first hit, and you just keep hitting them without them able to do anything until they die. But that's hard. And there are a lot of things that go into that, into landing a zero to death, even landing smaller combos, and even getting out of these combos. So a lot of influences, we're going to talk about what the combo-er can do first. So first of all is tech skill. This is where, what we talked about two weeks ago, like all that terminology, all those advanced techniques, this is where they actually really, really need to apply. Because if you aren't efficient and precise and fast with everything, if you miss L cancels, it won't work. If you can't wave dash, it won't work. You need all of your options in the middle of a combo to make sure you can use the, the best options mid-combo. Okay, and like, that's practice. That means having all your fundamentals down. I don't, like, I don't have all my fundamentals down. There's a lot of stuff that I need to work on. But I have it good enough that I can still land combo. Okay? Um, we talked a bit last week about reaction, reacting versus predicting. So in combo game, it's actually a lot more like intense and kind of um, pushed together of frames and like tiny windows where you need to react versus predict. Because like sometimes you can react. Sometimes you're like, okay, I know they're gonna go. I'm gonna hit them, and they're gonna like jump. So I can predict that jump by jumping myself to continue the combo. But other times you need to react. Like, if 
cheek down throws fox. You need to react to where fox is going to tech or get up so they can get the next one, okay? Every character has their moments where they can either react or predict. And like, I don't want to make this too generalized, but let's say like slower characters usually have to rely more on predicting because they can't react fast enough to punish different options, okay? So like the faster characters are like Fox, Sheep, Marth, the slower characters are like Peach and Jigglypuff. But again, everyone has the chances to predict as well as to react. Um, going more with character stats, so obviously your characters, or your, your combos that you can do depend on the character you pick. Some characters are really good at combos, and some characters just are not. They just don't have the usefulness, like the, the character kit or moveset to be able to keep hitting them over and over again mid-combo. And we'll get more into that. And the other thing is spacing and timing. So this is, it's like every time you dish out a hit, every time you put out a hitbox, that hitbox has so many different like points, so many different pixels, where if you hit the opponent with like any one of those like hundreds of pixels, it can send them in a different, a different trajectory, okay? And it might just be a very slight difference. Like if Marth forward air, if you hit with the tip as opposed to slightly next to the tip, that would send them into two different places, right? And you need to be able to know that, as well as time it to get that certain spot so that you get the tip or whatever part you want of the sword. Is it good? Yeah. Okay, all right. So what about the other, what about the person who's getting combo? So this will be actually its own presentation of how to get out of combos and how to survive. But just a brief summary, DI, every time you get hit, if you DI, then you're kind of changing the way your trajectory is to get out of combo. By the way, this is, this is what the other person can do to get out of combo. <laughs> so DI and smash DI, smash DI is another term, that's when you get hit, as soon as you get hit, you smash the control stick in a direction, and that kind of does a little bit more to your trajectory and acceleration sure. than regular DI. No, it just moves you over in the head. It doesn't right. affect trajectory. Okay. Well, okay, fine. It doesn't affect the trajectory, but it affects your initial position. Yeah. Which it <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, so DI is probably the best way to get out of combos. And that's, so if you're getting hit and you're in the middle of a combo, if you're just sitting there watching, you're doing nothing to get out of a combo. But if you're like, every time you get hit, you would put the control stick in a different direction. That's the main way, that's the best way to get out of combos. And there are other ways too, like if you hit the ground in a combo, you can choose to tech or you can choose not to tech. If you do, if you do tech, then you have the three options of teching left in place or right. And if you don't tech, you have more options like get up attack. Um, you can choose how long you want to wait before you get up. Um, a lot of options there. Um, if you're in the middle of a combo, Ed does this a lot with Luigi. Luigi's a character that like, if you're ge getting hit, you kind of mash A to get your neutral air out, and that's a big combo breaker, right? Because that's just, that like, as soon as you're able to throw out a hitbox, you do, and then you stop your opponent. Um, and then the last one is mix up. So like, you have all these options. Think about, neutral game where like you have options and you need to like pick one maybe it's rock paper scissors maybe you're picking one out of like 10 different options combo game is the same thing like let's say one time i get forwarded i di away but the next time i di in and they're expecting me to di away and maybe they'll miss it as a result okay so there's a lot of options that both players have in both comboing and getting comboed but today we're going to focus on what you can do when you're comboing the opponent all right so first we're going to talk about tech skill so part of this is speed, being able to move your character fast enough to catch them. Pretty simple. Precision, making sure that all of your movements are smooth. So part of this is like making sure your wave dash is as close to the ground as possible so you get the full distance. Okay? A lot of I me, mean, myself included, like you should see my sheet wave dash. A lot of the time you like you see like the little triangle jump thing where yes it's still a wave dash, but it's not the full distance. So you want to be able to do the full distance just in case you need to do that in the middle of a combo. Um, that's also kind of efficiency too. And then there's also all of the technique masteries. Just being able to have a wide repertoire of techniques that you're able to use in the middle of a combo. And here's just a big list. Um, one thing is aerial mobility. We didn't really talk about that before, but that's like, <clears throat> that's influencing your momentum in the air 
to set up yourself for the next thing that you want to do. So like being able to, like let's say with Peach, to float backwards and still be able to forward air. How do you do that? I mean one option is to actually press the, the Y button with your index finger and that way you can use your thumb for the Z stick. So things like that, like Jigglypuff, how do you start your back air approaching them but end the animation retreating? And that just takes practice, that takes knowing your character, which we'll talk about later. Alright, so going over the reaction time versus prediction. So we talked about like the fast and slow characters. So like Sheik and Mark, they're able to catch people. They're able to be like, okay, ready, ready, okay, go. And then they punish. Um, but some characters can't. Like, Peach is pretty slow, Jigglypuff is pretty slow. They can't cover every single option, so they have to pick and choose which ones they want to do. Um, and same with short and long range, like Marth. Sometimes you don't even need to have the running speed to do it. Like, Marth can just forward smash to cover, like, the tech away option or something like that. Um, and yeah, you have to choose if you want to predict or react or use a combination to punish whatever your opponent's trying to do. Whether it's, like, DI, if they're trying to tech in a certain place, um, or maybe, like, whenever I play Luigi, I expect them to try to neutral air out of everything I do. So I wait for it, and I punish it as a result. Okay, so now going back to the character mastery, so a lot of comboing is just knowing your character, just flat out, you need to know everything about your character. So including movesets, be able to know everything that your character can do. Frame data is always useful. What frame does this move come out on? Can it beat the opponent's combo breaker? <coughs> do you have a question? Okay. Um, ranges, how far does Marth's forward smash go? Will it reach? How far is his forward air? What's, what's the closest I can get to still hit it, but be far away enough that he can't hit it back? The trajectories is another big one. Like, Mart's forward air, I'm gonna keep using that as an example. Like, his forward air is a slash forward. And like, there are so many different points of it that send them in all these different ways. So you need to be able to know which pixel you want to hit them with to be able to send them in the place that you want them to be sent so you can hit the next one. Um, and yes, speeds, how fast your character is, and the hitboxes, so, any questions so far? All right, and last one is timing and spacing. So yeah, like I talked about, there's so many possible hitboxes, you need to choose when and where you want to hit them to send them in the appropriate place. Um, and like, there's a lot of variability you can do, like, I don't know, Fox is neutral there, if you hit them with the beginning of it, it's a very strong hit. But if you hit them with the tail end of it, or with like his foot, or like the, the very, very end of it, then they only get nudged a little bit. So like you can use both of them in the middle of combos, but which one would you want to do? That's up to you. Um, now something I'm obsessed with is called a weak back air. Because a lot of characters, especially the top or top tier -er ones, have back airs with kind of like delayed weak hitboxes. So, I'm gonna, I'll do Peach. Literally obsessed with this move. So Peach's back is like this, right? The hip, the hip just juts out, and if you hit with the hip, it's a strong move, right? But, what if I wanna hit with the other side of her hip? Kinda like where this indent is? This is actually a hitbox too, okay? Especially if you wait towards the end of the back air animation, if you hit them with that like very tail end, that'll just nudge the opponent forward. And what can you do after that? Neutral air. Anything like neutral air, up air, down air, just a lot of a lot of things. So let's say I'm in the middle of a combo. Okay. Or I'm, I'm just, I'll just show you. Get it oh. nice and high. Good combo. Oh. Good combo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ready? My dash tech? Oh. <laughs> dash attack, and he's right there. See that? He's like up and forward. So what can I do? What can I do? I can forward air. I can neutral air. Right? I can up air. But think about all of those moves. Yes, it's part of a combo because it's dash attack into something, right? Forward air would send him far away, 
but not far enough that it's easy to edge guard him. Okay? Same with neutral air, it'll send him far away, but not far enough that it's easy to edge guard him. Up air, yes, sends him upwards, but too far to be able to hit something after that. Okay? So what I like to do is go for a weak back air. So I'm I'm not gonna get this one because it's a little bit. Alright, let's see if I can get it. No, nope. that's not it. Oh my god. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. So yeah, like this also takes into account the DI that you end up trying to do. Because like all of those combo finishers, like the neutral or the forward or the I guess kind of up air because it's too far. If they DI in or um in which is what they're likely to do because <laughs> they're expecting you to just try to kill them, that DI helps them survive, right? Because who's going to DI out when they're put in that position if they're so close to the edge? But if you know they're going to DI in and you do a really weak move, they're not going to go anywhere because it's such a weak hitbox, right? They're just going to be there if they're DIing in. Like you're just going to nudge them a tiny bit forward closer to the stage, closer to the blast zone, increasing their percent just by like 7%, whatever it is, and then you can do the finishing move afterwards, okay? So it's like a tiny combo extender. That is pretty useful. So like, oh god. That, oh my god. Pretend, pretend. <laughs> okay, so, actually, hear what? Here's yeah. explain why. So what happened there? I got the weak back here, yes? But he wasn't DIing because it's a computer. Was DIing nowhere, right? But what are humans going to be doing? Towards the stage. Towards the stage. They're going to be DIing towards the stage, and that sets up the neutral air, right? So, I mean, you can argue, like, okay, what if I'm playing someone who doesn't know how to DI? <laughs> then yes, don't go for this option. But I can't tell you how many people I've played in tournament. That's how I finish combos. Against, like, spaces, dash attack, weak back air, neutral air. That's how I finished Game three against Lucky and PM. He ha had no idea I was going to go for it. Dash attack, jump off the stage, weak back air, because the neutral air wouldn't kill him if he's DIing in. I knew he was going to DI in, and he did. And so I just landed the neutral air afterwards. Okay? And a lot of characters have this. Sorry, guys, I can't comp with computers, apparently. Um, but, like, Fox has it, Sheik has it. Watch Mewtwo King's weak back airs with Sheik. They're sick. Um, and a lot of characters, they can do it. And it's just part of experimenting. Okay. So. Now we're going to spend the next several minutes going through a few of the high tiers and talking about their combos, okay? Pretty okay on time. Alright, first is Fox. So, to be honest, when I think of Fox, I don't really think of combos. I think of, like, lasers, very short strings of hits, and if the opponent is fast folly, then yes, you can get some cool combos. But otherwise, it's just a lot of, like, short bursts of hits. But to be honest, Fox has a lot of cool combos against everyone. You just have to know which hitboxes to use. So tell me, someone tell me, what's a Fox combo? Uh, shine, shine into another shine. Shine, shine yeah. Okay. Wave another shine. shine. <laughs> you can wave shine a lot of characters. That could be considered a combo. But how do you get out of that? Smash DI. Okay, another combo. Jab up smash. Jab up smash, right. That's fine against like floaty characters, even more heavier ones, but at higher percents. That's a good equal then, okay? Um, how do you beat that? Crash yes. cancel the jet. Smash the other drive out. Okay, what else? Drill oh, shine. Okay. Drill shine, yeah. How do you get out of the drill shine? Smash, smash, smash the other yeah. down it, right? So you have all these options, but you need to realize that all of them can yeah. be stopped with DI. You just have to think in your head, okay, what can I do to counterbalance that? Like maybe I should drill them going forward so that if they try to DI away, I'm still hitting them with the drill, okay? Maybe if I'm wave shining and they're trying to smash the eye out of it, maybe I can change the length of my wave dash to accommodate for their changes in smash the eye. Okay? Um, I can't demonstrate a lot of this at the moment, but because um, computers can't be eye. But what about other stuff? So okay, so you have like up throw and up smash. What? Yeah. Up throw. Up smash. Oh, there we go. The weak, there's like regular back air. A lot of people like to just like neutral air. Neutral air a lot and back air a lot on the ground. Just kind of like 
across the stage, if they're holding in, yes, it works. If they're holding out, which they should be doing, but a lot of people don't realize, then no, it doesn't work. Um, oh, wow, he teched it. Thunder's combo. <laughs> See that? What was that? Wow. Jab up smash? All right, so shine. We dash forward, jab, which resets him, okay? I don't really talk about that, but if you're on the ground and you don't tech, you can get jab reset and you're forced to stand up, okay? So after he stood up, I jumped, dropped with a falling up air, and then I, I think I went for an up, up tilt, or just a weak back air. Okay, so then I jumped up, hit with the weak back air, and then dropped down with an up smash, okay? That's a lot of damage. I mean, he had some before, but that was like a 50% 50, 50 combo right there. Yeah? So, I, I try to utilize everything. I reacted to his DI, I don't even know if he did have DI, but I got the weak back air, I used all my moves, I got the wave shine, which is part of the tech mastery. I mean, sure, it could have been cleaner, sure, I, I might have been able to extend it further, but that's part of playing the character. Like, I'm not a fox maid. A fox maid probably could have done more than that, and all of you have the potential to do a lot more than that, you just have to know your character, okay? Other classic fox combos, up throw, up air, Again, you can get out of that with Smash DI. Um, wave shine into like anything. <laughs> kind of annoying. Um, yeah, any questions about Fox? Okay, moving on. Next is Falco. So, Fox plays a very horizontal game. Like, you have a lot of neutral airs, you have a lot of back airs. But Falco, you want to demonstrate Falco? You can probably do a better game than shit, right? Combo, just combo with Falco. Combo with Falco, and I'll talk about it. A CPU, combo with CPU. <laughs> well, I don't know how to call that. Just do it. It's I okay. Play, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a level, it's a computer. Okay, <laughs> so Fox is very horizontal, okay? Yes, you have like your up smash and up air. <laughs> Which I'd be for maximum camera. Oh, yeah. okay. But Falco is like pretty much strictly a vertical combo game, okay? His shine sends them directly upwards, and his down air sends them directly downwards. So, you put them together, and that's called pillaring. You shine them down here, shine them down here, and you just keep going up and down and up and down. Pillar, it's like a pillar. Yeah, keep doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. Shine, also up tilt is great for Falco combos. It puts them sometimes in a better position. Um, back air is often a good finisher, but if you can land the weak hit of the back air, you can do some pretty disgusting stuff, especially if they're DI game. Like what I've seen, I think it was like Milkman against Red. Milkman was Cosmo for some reason. He, against Fox, he jumped, weak back air, into shine, into jump down air, and it killed. Okay? Weak back air, shine in the middle of the air, into down air. So this was, the, the weak back air was actually on top of a platform. Okay? So if he just went, no weak back air, just shine down air, Fox would have landed onto the stage. But because of the weak back air, it pushed Fox just far enough away that he got spiked onto the end of the blast. Alright, let's watch. What's he gonna do? Shine back air. You have to be faster than what he did, though. And that's part of the speed we talked about. It's, it's possible. It's, I'm pretty sure it's possible that percent. But you just have to be super fast. Um, yeah. To time the back air. A lot of Falco is wave shining, even against Fox. Because if you shine, how do you get out of your shine? Really, like, you're the only way is to jump. And if you shine and then jump, then you're off the ground. So you can't go for like an up tilt or something at one percent. So if you wave shine, then you're on the ground able to keep the punish going. Like, you see West Falls, like, sh uh, wave shine, follow the Fox's DI, there's the reaction, and then. Short hop. All right, all right. I, I, I didn't know if you wanted me to do the wave shines. No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So yeah, a lot of it is just wave shines. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, West Falls will like sh wave shine. Follow the Fox's DI because part of getting out of Falco's combos is the smash DI. So you can react to it just by walking out of the wave shine and then shuffle a downer into another shine. Okay, and that works like four or five times because you can react to it. Any questions about Falco? Another part of Falco is using your lasers, the hit stun of the lasers to just continue combos from far away. All right, Marth. So when I used to think Marth was an easy character to play, just because they're pretty simple, but actually Marth is hard. I like I've been playing Marth for so long, so I've gotten a lot better at like knowing which hitboxes you need to be able to combo stuff. So a lot of his 
A lot of Marth is just knowing what part of the sword you want to hit them with, okay? People talk about like the tip of the sword. Okay. Man. There. Look at this. Each one of these points will send them in a different trajectory, okay? Albeit very slight differences. The biggest difference is the very tip of the sword. If you hit with the tip, that has the most knockback, okay? So a lot of people are like, oh, we'll always go for the tip of the sword. No. No, because often you want it you want to hit them in ways that keeps them close to you so that you can hit them again. Right? If I just want to forward some forward or someone across the stage, I don't want to tip them every time. Because the tip sends them like forward and upwards, which is often too far away to to continue the hitbox, okay? Sometimes even if I get a foreigner and it's tipped, it sends them pretty close to me and I can still follow up with something else, but maybe it requires my second jump and then after that second hit, I need to get back on the ground before I can continue the combo even more. As opposed to hitting them towards the hilt that sends them just barely far away and then you can follow with another foreigner getting back on the ground. Does that make sense? So. I don't know if I can show it on Fox, but like, here's, here's the double forward air in, in one short hop, and part of, part of the combo is like that, see that? So like, I'm not hitting with the tip every single time, I'm controlling what part of the sword I want to hit him with, so that I can continue the combo onward. So when you, when you think of Marth, you also think of like, oh, the Ken combo is an easy combo, right? It's not easy. No, it's, not. It's, not, it's not easy at all, because you need to take into account everything to figure out which part of the forward air you want to hit them with to land the next down air. So Ken combo is forward air to down air, just two hits. But off the stage, that's often how you kill people because the down air is a spike. So every time you get put in that situation, you'd be like, okay, I need to start the forward air here, position myself based on their trajectory so that by the time I land the forward air, by the time it hits them, they get sent just like nudged forward so that I can jump with the down air. And even the downer is also really hard to hit because only the tip of the downer spikes, right? If you hit with like towards the inside of the sword, it'll actually send them up, which is not what you want to do. You want to spike them. So like just in those two moves, so much variation exists. And like that you can tell when Marts aren't really used to it. Like FDR in that crew battle we did a couple weeks ago, like he did a Ken combo, which was great, but it was so hesitant because he was like very unsure of which hitbox to use. And that's fine. That's a lot of just playing the character and getting to know them. Um, and that's why I don't think Marth is nearly one of the easiest characters to play because you need to know like every single hitbox and every single possibility that you can do with him. Okay. Other things about Marth, his his up air you can chain throw, fast fallers, fox and falco. Um, if you watch Mewtwo King, you do not want to play Mewtwo King's Marth on FD because he will kill you if he gets a grab. Um, Marth's forward throw is good against like Peach and Jigglypuff, but there's your combo or there's your DI trap. Um, if you forward throw, if Peach gets forward throw by Marth, how do you how do you DI that to avoid all damage? Down, down, down and away. away. Okay, oh. diagonally down and away, and Marth cannot follow up. <laughs> but if you're if the Marth's like, okay, Peach is thinking you're going to forward throw, so what if I back throw or down throw? Down throw sends them behind. So if they're DIing this way, and I and Marth sends Peach this way, the Peach will be closer to Marth, right? And then you can forward smash. Often get a tip with a forward smash, um, depending on percent and stuff. Okay, so there's a lot of like DI stuff with Mart's throw. Um, yeah, any questions about that? Okay. Sheik. Sheik has like five moves that you just repeat. They all like, combo <laughs> into each other. It's dash attack, forward tilt, down tilt, forward air, down throw. Honestly, if you just use those five moves, and that's actually how I learned Sheik, just using those moves plus down smash, then you're good. They're your combos. A lot of, like, that's, that's honestly what Sheik does. Um, we'll do... we'll do more. Alright, let's see. So first of all, down throw. Look at that. Look at where he sent. You can do, like, anything out of that. You can forward tilt. You can forward air. Maybe you can forward air. Might be a little low percent, but like down throw forward air is like such a good, such a good combo starter. Because forward tilt <laughs> sends them even like in a better position, because that leads <coughs> to the forward air, right? All right, let's see. Down throw, forward tilt, forward air, forward tilt. 
run it in down tilt. Another four. Another four there. I like that though. Okay, never mind. Can't side B. Dash attack is also a great combo starter. And like dash attack is pretty useful in neutral game. Because it's so fast. Like look at this. I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not Mewtwo King, I can't do the weak backer crap. <laughs> if he, so if he was DIing in, then I would have landed the forward. Okay? Just a disclaimer. So yeah. Cheek is just it's a lot of the small hits that end up doing a lot of damage that use forward air as both a combo continuer if you can get the hitbox that sends them slightly downward to like get back on the ground and keep forward tilting dash attacking, or as a combo finisher when you're off the stage. Okay? Peach, down smash. <laughs> That's a combo right there. Um, otherwise, Peach really likes dash attack. That's actually why I kind of started using Peach, because I used to be a Sheik main before Peach, and I was like, wow, Peach's dash attack is very similar to Sheik's. So yeah, there's your down smash. Dash attack. If you, so if you land the... <laughs> if you land like the, the strong hit of the dash attack like that, they get sent upwards. And that's great for like Fox, because you can just grab, right? And then going back to the more like dash attack also into weak back here and neutral there. Um, but you should also, you can also play around with like the weak hit of the dash attack, or even like the not so weak that's like kind of in the middle of the timing, the one that sends them, the one that sends them forward. All right, Fox, stop it. So there's that, the weak hit that kind of just nudges them forward, and then like the. God, what level is this computer is just following me? It's one. One? Okay. Like, that one, that sends them forward. So, with dash attack, I just gave you three options. And those are three pretty distinct options. If you want to send them up, forward, or like, not gently nudge them forward. So what I like to do against Captain Falcon, we'll talk about this in the edge guarding one, but like, a great way to edge guard Captain Falcon is to hit with the very weakest hit of a dash attack. Because it sends them down and away. Which is great, because that's where Falcon does not want to be. Down and away from the city. Okay? Um, otherwise, Peach likes up air. Armada pretty much invented the up air with Peach, because you can do so much out of it, especially against like the mid weight characters like Sheik and Marth and Pikachu. <coughs> it's just up air, up air, weak back air, neutral air. Classic combo. Classic combo. Um, down air is also good as a combo extender, because you just end it with neutral air. So Peach. When you're not playing against Fox or Falco or even Falcon, Peach is not a character that has like good zero to deaths. You don't have like the options to like hunt, like hundred percent kill someone just because one she's not fast enough to continue the combos, and two is just the way that her moves work. A lot of the time, the best you can do is just end with a neutral air, reset to neutral, and then go neutral again. <coughs> but Peach does have good like twenty. Like 20% to 60% combos on a lot of characters. Okay. Jigglypuff. Back here. Okay, ne no. <laughs> so what does Jigglypuff have? Up, 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 up till it. So a lot of Jigglypuff's combos end in rest. So Jigglypuff's advantage, kind of like Peach, she doesn't have very long combos. But a lot of her short combos end in rest. Okay? And that's, that's a kill a lot of the time, if they're at like 40-50%. So, ready? Yeah. I'll throw a rest! Killed! 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 <coughs> so, that's probably because he didn't DI it. He, he didn't DI it, they off the throw, he didn't DI the rest. But, there's a combo. Um, other ways to land rest, like up tilt, at higher percents, or against like, not fogs. So once you get to high percent and then they don't just keep getting hit on the ground, up tilt also works in a rest. You can, um, back air is just a great move in general, but like you can see, it doesn't send them in a spot where you can continue the combo that much. I guess some characters, yes, back air leads into back air, especially off the stage when they're not on the ground, and then you just edge guard them. But, um, I mean, that, like, that's really the problem. Like, if they're holding out, if they're trying to DI out of the stuff you're doing, you can't really extend the combo that long. Um, hopefully you land a rest though. Okay. I think it's the last one. So this kind of yeah. shout out to tomorrow's tournament. Falcon is like a huge combo character because, and it, 
the fact that his neutral game is pretty bad makes up for it. Because if he does win neutral game, <laughs> oftentimes you end up in a kill. What? He looks happy. Okay. Oh, I don't think Goblin. I mean, all it's pretty bad. Dash dance, but I don't think it's neutral game. <laughs> you don't think it's what? I don't think it's particularly bad. Well. It's just like you have to, all you can do right. is dash in. Exactly. Yeah. There, like, there are a few options, like they're good options, but it's, it's so predictable. Yeah. Okay, so Falcon, like Falcon, I'm probably not the best one to demonstrate this, but Falcon, it's kind of like if you land, if you win neutral, the, ch the options that you choose to win neutral usually can land into like a huge combo that ends into a kill. So this is kind of like the zero to death champion, because a lot of his stuff is just, okay, I got one hit, I got a lot more hits. I can keep getting hits and then you're dead. Because they ultimately end in a knee. Um, the classic one I can think of, I don't think Fox, I can't stop. Maybe, we're gonna try more, maybe. So, Falcon's throws are really good combo starters. Down throw and up throw, depending on their percent. Usually, you would down throw like 20% later than you would up throw if you want to send them like the general same area. Okay, so like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the shoot Rex arms. So, up throw, neutral air, if I can short hop. Up air, if I can short hop. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand yeah. up. <laughs> Alright, so you have like up throw, up air, into a down air and knee. So, Falcon's down air is also a great combo starter because it sends them like directly above you if they're at high enough percent. And then after the down air, you can do a lot of cool stuff, as in pretty much the same combo over and over again, of down throw, and then a combination of neutral airs and up airs until you land the knee. It's so exciting. Super exciting. I mean, Falcon's a pretty exciting character just to watch, but like, his bad side is you need to land one of those hits if you want to stand, if you want to start a combo. So the one of those hits that's like pretty much down air, neutral air, Falling up air and grab. Those are like your four combo starters, and it's it gets pretty predictable of which one you're gonna go for. Like I really like to go for falling up airs, um, but that's Falcon. It's just land a hit, aerial, 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 aerial knee, and you can get out of that by like diing away. So it's up to Falcon to try to change up his aerial momentum to land the final. Move. Okay, that's all the characters we'll be talking about today. So just a summary. Know your character's hitboxes so that you can control their trajectory that you want to send them in. Mix-ups, pay attention to your opponent's mix-ups as well as your own. Like what you can do to counterbalance your opponent's mix-ups with like DI and tanking and stuff. Um, have the tech skill necessary to like cover all the options and be fast enough to, to actually combo them. And then just master your character. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, I can't say that enough. I've been playing like even Marth for like 10 years at this point. I still don't know all of his hitboxes. Um, a lot of that is just playing. You can do research on yourself, or for yourself, but a lot of it is just experimenting, trying to get used to combos, the different hitboxes you can do, and ultimately figuring out your own style of combo. Alright, any questions? Alright. Thanks, guys. Let's go get food. Oh, true. Okay. So, who is. You can know that. Who's saying?